So Shackelford Panthers, um, this is going to be your little library skills and we're going to be talking about nonfiction. So I'm pulling a few books. This is nonfiction. If you have been into your library at all, um, you know where these are. And so I want this for each school just so I can show you in your own library. So these are nonfiction and then we're going to go right up here and see those are the numbers they're all categorized by number because if you had this many books and they were all thrown in a pile in the middle of this room <clears throat> and say you wanted to do a book or do a book report about weather you would need to know where to find the weather so I'm going to show you a couple of things okay in the five twelves, you're talking about ancient civilizations. And then they go along and they're talking about numbers. And then in the five thirteens, they're talking about the gold rush. If you come down here to the five twenty threes, all of a sudden you're gonna find all kinds of books about space and the planets. So um, you go along and look, in the 551s, there, they're talking about weather. And then the 567s, those are dinosaurs. So I'm not going to go through every number, but I'm going to pull just a couple of things. Um, let's look at animals in flight. No, 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 let's don't look at that. Let's look at prehistoric people. That's fun. But let's don't get this book. See, when you're pulling books out, pull them like this. And then, because I did not bring my spacer, I'm going to scoot that one out a little bit. So we're going to walk over here. And then I'm going to show you just a few of the books that I pulled from the nonfiction section. And so we're not going to go through the whole nonfiction section, but just a little at a time, because I want you, when you come back to the library, to know exactly well, as much as you can, where you can find things. Because we spend a lot of time wasting it on just trying to figure out where it is. So, okay, so here's prehistoric people. So if you wanted to know, whoops, sorry about the glare. I'm not sure how to keep that from happening. And so it says our school, Modesto City Schools, and look, in this book about prehistoric people, there's an interesting thing. Those are skulls down through the years. And then the table of contents tells us what we can find. And remember, nonfiction means that everything is based on fact. So, how scientists study prehistoric people, what are humans, learning from his prehistoric people, things you should know. So what do we find? We find humans can use their flexible thumbs to hold needles, open a door, turn a screwdriver. This is why dogs can't do it. And so this will talk about what are humans, how do they differ from other animals. They talk about brains, brain size, so that's pretty interesting. I know there's going to be some of you that are really going to like this. And then I picked something about our solar system. This is from the Smithsonian Institute. Our solar system. Remember I told you that your library is one of the best places you can start to gain knowledge. This says we were born almost five billion years ago at the edge of the Milky, Milky Way galaxy. Our solar system is a place filled with mystery and wonder. Look, this talk talks about the galaxy and the planets and in relation where everything is in relationship to the uh, to one another. Um, it gives us 
information about the sun. This, this says the center or core of the sun is about as big as the planet of Jupiter. And so this will give us information about our solar system, which obviously I showed you the front, and our planets. So if you are someone who is really interested in what's going on not on this earth, this might be a very interesting book for you. Or look at, look at how the moon, it says the moon is the earth's closest neighbor in space, only about one quarter of a million miles away. Oh, that's, that's so small. And so, anyway, I want you to know that that's there. Some of you may have not ever looked. Here's another thing. This is a nonfiction, and this was in the 398, whoops, 398 number, American Tall Tales. Tall tales are like Paul Bunyan. Um, let's see what it says. It says, meet America's first folk heroes in these nine wildly exaggerated and downright funny stories. Paul Bunyan, the king-sized lumberjack, John Henry, Moe's, an old New York's bravest, bravest fireman, biggest bravest fireman. Um, and so these are stories that have been passed down through the years, and they are also nonfiction because it's been documented that these are really old stories. These are kind of a fun thing. Your grandparents or your great-grandparents may have known about some of these stories. Paul Bunyan's one that's been going around for years. I remember it from when I was a kid. So, it says, Tall Talk, or Exaggerated Storytelling, began in the 1800s as a way for Americans to come to terms, come to terms with the vast and inhospitable lands that they came to inhabit. Inhospitable means that they were not very welcome where they were trying to live. And so it talks about thick, dark forests filled with bears and panthers. And these are stories that people built upon over the years and made them bigger. It's like, oh, I caught this fish, and the fish goes from being this big to that big, depending on who's telling it. So um, this has got some of the most famous it's also got really nice illustrations, too. So this is about Davy Crockett. And Davy Crockett was a real person. The stories might have been stretched out a little bit. So there's not a lot of pictures, but the stories are really good. Um, also, in the nonfiction, early nonfiction in the 155, it talks about this one, for instance, and, and in the books kind of close by, it talks about similar things. But this one is, how do I feel when people die? Sometimes we have family members or people we're close to or friends that die and sometimes it's, sometimes it's our pet. How do we feel? Sometimes it's hard to know. Can you be angry? Can you be sad? Because you are all those things. And this is just a book that talks about it because we're all going to know some time in our lives somebody that this happens to. So it's, it's kind of nice to read about it. So this says, what is dying? Why do people die? What happens? Um, how do you feel learning to cope? And don't forget. You don't want to forget somebody who you really care about that maybe passed away. So this has a nice little introduction. And, and kids talk about the same things that you guys are going to be concerned with. So... That's another thing that is covered in um, our nonfiction. Fiction is great when we want to have stories and just make things up, but nonfiction is good when you really need to have a fact. The Child's World of Self Control. Boy, we can all use a little self control. And so this. This is in 153. I think I stacked them wrong. I started out at the beginning because I want you to know exactly what we have in the, um, the nonfictions. And so this says, what is self-control? Self-control is listening to your friend talk when you want him to listen to you. That's a pretty good explanation. Sometimes we have a story to tell, but somebody else wants to talk too, so we have to be considerate. 
Letting someone else take the biggest piece of candy takes self-control. And waiting until after dinner to eat your piece takes even more. So it talks about different situations where you might need to have a little control over yourself. Coming into the library is a good example because you have to have some self-control when you're excited to see the books and things. And this, this is just interesting. It's about optical tricks. More fun from the I Spy books. Let's see. Well, this is just pictures. This says tricky triangle. The yellow triangle has a particular a peculiar twist. It's impossible, or is it? This triangle may be tricky, but it's not impossible. In fact, it's not really a triangle. Huh, let's look at this again. And then we're gonna be done with this for right now. Oh, there's a cutout there, but I can't tell if the balls are attached, but that's pretty interesting. So take a look at this book. So that's all I'm going to talk about for, because it's already been 10 minutes, um, for library skills today. We will come back um, next time, and I might take you through some of um, the sports books or some of the art books that are coming up. And that is all for today. See you next time. Bye.